نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We we'll begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We we'll praise him and we we'll ask his help and we seek his forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us and from the evil consequences of our bad actions Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides no one can misguide and whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, no one can guide. They testify that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our master, our teacher, and our leader. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, at the beginning of Islam, the polytheists in Mecca, did everything possible to stop the Prophet Muhammad from conveying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to people. And one of their tactics was to prove that the Prophet Muhammad was in an attempt to prove that the Prophet was lying. So they decided to send a group of them to Yathrib, later on became Medina. They sent a group of them to Yathrib to meet with some of the Jews there and asked them about some signs of the true prophethood. So they wanted to just, you know, they want to, to, to find out whether the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is true prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that some of them went to Yathrib. And they asked some Jews there to give them some signs to test the Prophet ﷺ. So it was said to them, ask him about the ruh. Ask him about the man who traveled the earth. And also ask him about the mysterious story of young people they are called the sleepers, known to our tradition as the companions of the cave. They came, they went back to Mecca, they asked the Prophet ﷺ the three questions, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result revealed Surah Al-Kahf, in which he spoke about these things. And Surah Al-Kahf is one of the most famous surahs in the Quran. A lot of people know it, a lot of Muslims memorize it by heart. It has so many benefits if you read it into uh, in, in on the day of Friday, on the Jum'ah, the couple of um, a hadith that speaks about the benefits of reciting the surah on Friday. The surah has four stories. And I will, I will tell you this. Wallahi, if you study those four stories in depth, they will change your perspective in life. They will change your perspective about Allah, about creed, about life, and about the hereafter. And they will help you in so many other ways. The companions of the cave. As the story goes, they were a group of young people who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it said that the Roman emperor during that time persecuted non-pagans and forced people to follow his tradition. Those young people refused to follow his tradition. In one narration it says that they were actually summoned before the emperor, but they held their stance. And just the, 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 the king or the emperor, due to their young age, he gave them a second chance. He gave them time to think it over. So they spoke. They spoke among themselves about what to do. 
where to go and who to turn to. And they chose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above everyone else. They turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their, in their shelter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned their, their request, their hopes, their du'as in the Quran in Surah Al-Kahf. إِذْ أَوَى الْفِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا When they entered the cave, their shelter, they raised their hands, they prayed to Allah, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy, and they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of their affairs in the best way. So they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They expressed their hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them guidance, will grant them wisdom, patience in their trial, security from their enemies, and eventual deliverance. And they also prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they asked Him to have a good end, that their end would be sound and rightly guided. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma ma qadayta lana min qada faj'al aqibatahu rushda He used to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Oh Allah, whatever you have decreed for us make its consequences good So they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of their problem and this is really what I want to highlight today brothers and sisters they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they were facing problems and so, where do we go in times of hardship? Where do we take refuge? You know, when the problems of life are overwhelming, where do we go for, for comfort and safety? Some people, they find it easy to turn to a friend. Some others to a family member. Some people don't find comfort in life at all and they end up taking their lives. Some people, they try to escape through, you know, distraction and substance like alcohol and drugs. And some others, they just find it in a bowl of ice cream. But the believer, brothers and sisters, turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believer shares his problems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and wisdom. And so, when you feel that you are being overwhelmed by the problems of this life, things that you cannot control, what do you do? Hand, hand him over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, hand him over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do, what do you find? You find solutions with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if the solution is taken longer than expected, you will also find comfort. You will find peace. You will find calmness. As a matter of fact, some people sometimes they say, when we are in the midst of the problems, when we are in the midst of the problems, subhanAllah, I feel comfortable. I feel that there is calmness in my heart. Where does this calmness come from, brothers and sisters? It comes from the fact that you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to step in. It came from the fact that you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to step in and fix your problems. And who's better to fix your problems than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who's better to take care of your affairs other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who's better to assist you and help you and find you a way out from every trouble in this life? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one, no one brothers and sisters. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you ask, ask Allah, why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَلْتَ فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ And if you need help, seek it through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's all knowing, all seeing, all hearing, all mighty, all powerful. That's what you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you from the darkness of all these problems that you're facing in life, whatever the problem is. When you seek Him, He will take you from darkness of the problems and deliver you. He will take you into the light of relief. But turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how? How do we turn to Allah? How do I hand over my problems to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do I do that? We have to be aware of two things. Number one is, come close to Allah. If you have a problem and you want Allah to take care of it for you, come close to Allah. You cannot ask refuge from far. If it's raining outside right now, if it's raining really, really hard, outside right now and you're walking in the street and you see a shelter like a quarter mile away what do you do you run to the shelter you run to it so run to Allah run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will find you a way out he will provide you with a shelter you know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the masjid one day at a time that was really no it wasn't a time for prayer and he saw a man sitting there. His name was Abu Umama, one of his companions, raising his hand, calling upon Allah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him, weeping and, and crying. And so the Prophet said, so this man is already fulfilling that part. That if, you, if I want Allah to step in, if I want to share my problems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to find a way to communicate. I have to find a way to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was already fulfilling that part. He understood that you've got to come close if you need shelter, if you need help. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of his kindness, he said, Ya Aba Umama, let me teach you something that if you do, if you say in the morning and in the evening, every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your pain and take care of your debts. And this is magic. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of the most incredible du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it does work. He said to him, قُلْ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْهَمِّ وَالْحَزَنِ وَمِنَ الْعَجِزِ وَالْكَسَلِ وَمِنْ غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ Say, Ya Allah, I seek protection in you. From the pain and the suffering of this life and from laziness and inability and to, from death and, and the trouble that death brings and to be overcome by others. And he said, subhanAllah, he said that I've start saying this dua or these words until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed my pain and settled my, my debt. So come close, that's the one thing that we need to know. Come close, if you want to turn to Allah subhanahu, if you want to turn your problems to Allah, if you want to hand over your problems to Allah, you have to come close to Allah. The second thing is to stay calm in times of hardship. You may be in the problem, but do not let the problem to get in you. Take the boat, for example, a boat in the water. A boat that is surrounded by water from all directions. All troubles. As long as the boat does not allow water in, it will survive. If the boat starts to allow the water inside, you know, before long it will sink. It's the same principle in life. The same principle in life. Do not allow what's on the outside to get on the inside. Do not allow these troubles that you have, whatever the problem is. You know, people at work, they're giving you hard times. Gossiping. You know, playing politics in you, playing games with you at home. You know, having, you know, a, a, a problems with your spouse, 
Raising a child, a difficult child. You know, even at school, people trying to make you look bad, whatever the problem is. Whatever the problem is. Turn him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not allow these problems to disquiet you, to disturb you, to take peace away from you. Those people, they went to a shelter, a safe place, a protection, a place where they can find sakina. The same thing happened with the Prophet wasallam, also in the cave during his migration. It's the same concept. He was in the cave, but he was so relieved. He was so comfortable, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he knew he cannot allow a Sunni outside to get in the inside. He cannot allow the problems that he is facing to get inside him and cause him to lose comfort and peace. And that's when people start to make him poor decisions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to stay in peace in time of hardship. Abu Bakr said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah, if they, if we, they can see us. Then the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what do you think of two? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their third. And Allah said, La tahzan. You know what that mean? La tahzan. He said that to them in the cave. Relax. That's what Allah is saying. Relax. Don't let it discomfort you. Don't, don't let it disturb you. Don't. Don't relax. Just relax. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was actually had his head, he was laying down, he had his head on the thigh of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, very comfortable. And even the commentators of the Qur'an, they said, When Allah says that the sakina came down, he wasn't talking alayhi, the pronoun does not really apply to, uh, to the Prophet, it's to Abu Bakr, because the Prophet already has sakina. He already had sakina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So stay in peace. Those are the two things that we need to be aware of. Come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay in peace. In life, brothers and sisters, there will always be troubles. There will be times when you feel that everything is just out of control. Again, problems at work, at home, here and there. But just like the companions of the cave, in the midst of the problem, there is only one place to go. There is only one source of peace and comfort. There is only one shelter. And that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve the pain and the suffering of anybody who's going through any type of pain. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما انفعنا اللهم زدنا علما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا الله سبحانه وتعالى protect us all يا الله سبحانه وتعالى protect our community and and our families, and keep us all safe and healthy. Allahumma ameen. There is a dua request for a brother who is ill, uh, Dr. Farooq Kadway. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, give him shifa, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the illness of anybody who is suffering from any type of illness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you speedy recovery and remove your pain and suffering. And may Allah remove the pain and the suffering of all innocent people in every corner of this globe, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our efforts worthy of appreciation and our sins forgiven and our deeds accepted, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor us as he honored the righteous people before us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill in our hearts his love and the love of those who love him and the love of anything and everything that will bring us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aj'al hadha al-jam'i jam'an marhuma, 
وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فارفق به ومن اشتد عليهم فاشدد عليه اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وسألوه يعتقكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقموا الصلاة Weeping and, and crying and so the Prophet said so this man is already fulfilling that part that if, you, if I want Allah to step in if I want to share my problems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have to find a way to communicate I have to find a way to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was already fulfilling that part. He understood that you've got to come close if you need shelter, if you need help. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of his kindness, he said, Ya Aba Umama, let me teach you something that if you do, if you say in the morning and in the evening, every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your pain and take care of your debts. And this is magic. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of the most incredible du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and it does work. He said to him, قُلْ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْهَمِّ وَالْحَزَنِ وَمِنَ الْعَجِزِ وَالْكَسَلِ وَمِنْ غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ Say, Ya Allah, I seek protection in you. From the pain and the suffering of this life and from laziness and inability and to, from debt and, and the trouble that debt brings and to be overcome by others. And he said, subhanAllah, he said that I've start saying this dua or these words until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed my pain and settled my, my debt. So come close, that's the one thing that we need to know. Come close. If you want to turn to Allah subhanahu, if you want to turn your problems to Allah, if you want to hand over your problems to Allah, you have to come close to Allah. The second thing is to stay calm in times of hardship. You may be in the problem, but do not let the problem to get in you. Take the boat, for example, a boat in the water. A boat that is surrounded by water from all directions. All troubles. As long as the boat does not allow water in, it will survive. If the boat starts to allow the water inside, you know, before long it will sink. It's the same principle in life. The same principle in life. Do not allow what's on the outside to get on the inside. Do not allow these troubles that you have, whatever the problem is. You know, people at work, they're giving you hard times, gossiping, you know, playing politics in you, playing games with you at home. You know, having, you know, a, a, a problems with your spouse, raising a child, a difficult child. You know, even at school, people trying to make you look bad, whatever the problem is. Whatever the problem is, turn him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not allow these problems to disquiet you, to disturb you, to take peace away from you. Those people, they went to a shelter, a safe place, a protection, a place where they can find sakina. The same thing happened with the Prophet ﷺ, also in the cave during his migration. It's the same concept. He was in the cave, but he was so relieved. He was so comfortable ﷺ. 
Because he knew he cannot allow a Sunni outside to get in the inside. He cannot allow the problems that he is facing to get inside him and cause him to lose comfort and peace. And that's when people start to make him poor decisions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to stay in peace in time of hardship. Abu Bakr said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they can see us. Then the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what do you think of two? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their third. And Allah said, la tahzan. You know what that mean? La tahzan. He said that to them in the cave. Relax. That's what Allah is saying. Relax. Don't let it discomfort you. Don't, don't let it disturb you. Don't. Don't. Relax. Just relax. He وسلم, was actually had his head, he was laying down, he had his head on the thigh of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Very comfortable. And even the commentators of the Quran, they said, وَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِ when Allah says that the sakina came down, He wasn't talking alayhi. The pronoun does not really apply to, uh, to the Prophet. It's to Abu Bakr. Because the Prophet already has sakina. He already had sakina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So stay in peace. Those are the two things that we need to be aware of. Come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay in peace. In life, brothers and sisters, there will always be troubles. There will be times when you feel that everything is just out of control. Again, problems at work, at home, here and there. But just like the companions of the cave, in the midst of the problem, there is only one place to go. There is only one source of peace and comfort. There is only one shelter. And that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve the pain and the suffering of anybody who's going through any type of pain. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man walah. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما انفعنا اللهم زدنا علما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا الله سبحانه وتعالى protect us all يا الله سبحانه وتعالى protect our community and our families and keep us all safe and healthy اللهم آمين there is a dua request for a brother who is ill uh, Dr. Farooq Kadway May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, give him shifa insha'Allah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the illness of anybody who is suffering from any type of illness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you speedy recovery and remove your pain and suffering. And may Allah remove the pain and the suffering of all innocent people in every corner of this globe. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our efforts worthy of appreciation and our sins forgiven and our deeds accepted, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor us as he honored the righteous people before us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill in our hearts his love and the love of those who love him and the love of anything and everything that will bring us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. اللهم اجعل هذا الجمع جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محموما اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فرفق به ومن اشتد عليهم فاشدد عليه اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واسألوه يعتقكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقم الصلاة